We have reached our top of climb and are heading towards the top of descent. We have set the cockpit up for the descent. We need to start planning how we're going to descend from 39,000 feet and slow the aircraft down. At the top of the steep descent to the localizer, we want to be at flaps 15 maneuvering speed with gear down. In the previous video, we worked out that our V-Rev flaps 40 speed was 131. So add 20 to that and our flaps 15 maneuvering speed will be 151. So let's enter that into the FMC so that we are at that speed at the top of the scent. You will see that as we execute it, all the other speeds will change and that the flight management system will slow the aircraft down for us. The first officer's CDU will be set to the progress page. We can monitor ETA, distance to go, altitude, fuel, and get a good idea of how our flight is progressing. So about five miles before the top of descent, I will instruct the aircraft to start descending a bit earlier so that we can get a gentler rate of descent, which the passengers would prefer. Turn the altitude selector down to 9,500 feet, our Rattenberg height, and then hit the DES button, and then DES now, and then execute and the plane will start a gentle descent. Let's skip forward a little bit and you will see that as we approach the Manal waypoint we begin picking up the NDB signal at Rattenberg and the RMI needle swings around a bit. This happens exactly like this in real life. Here you can see we are coming up to the Rattenberg NDB which is marked in blue because we put it in the FMC as one of our fixes. We need to be at a speed of 223 at Rattenberg and then we will need to concentrate on slowing the aircraft down to flaps 15 maneuvering speed before our steep descent begins. You will see that it, there is a deceleration zone just before Rattenberg where we will flatten out and slow the aircraft down. As we pass through 12,000 feet, which is our transition altitude, we will set the QNH to local. So we're at Rattenberg now on this last leg where we're going to intercept the localizer for the OEV localizer and then we're going to start a steep descent. So we need to slow down quite a bit before we start that descent. Always be aware of the flap speed limits on your aircraft and they're usually on the dashboard in front of you. My goal is to be at the top of the steep descent with at least flaps 15 and gear down. So you can see as we come to Rattenberg our speed is slightly high so I'm going to go straight to flaps 1 and never use the speed brakes and the flaps together. So as we head toward the top of the steep descent into the Innsbruck Valley 
it's all about slowing down using flaps and gear down. By the time I begin the descent at about DME 18 from the localizer, I want to be at 9,500 feet and I want to be at flaps 15 maneuvering speed, which for me is 151 knots. Now we are making our final right turn to line up with runway 26 and then in a few nautical miles time we will begin our steep descent. So let's fast forward a little bit as we go down this hill until between 6.3 and 4.2 DME we should have runway 26 in sight once we have runway 26 in sight we're going to turn left 15 degrees to start our visual circle to land so the runway is nicely in sight straight ahead of us and i'm going to heading select a course of 230 as we begin our visual circle to land procedure We're going to hug the left side of this valley and then I'm going to change course to a 264 heading which is basically a downwind leg for the runway and then we're going to do a, a manual 186 degree turn to come in and line up with the runway. I know from the map that this north-south gully on the left is more or less where we need to make our course alteration to 264. We'll then fly the 264 course until we reach the little circle on the ND, the 3.5 DME circle, at which point I will switch off the autopilot and auto throttle and make the turn to come and line up with the runway. So I have one eye on the runway, the other eye on the mountain and then I'm also looking at this DME circle. Once I get to the far end of it I'm going to need to act quickly. I want to be at flaps 40. My speed brakes will be armed and I want to just make one turn, line up with the runway and land. The terrain map looks pretty scary. This red over here means that those mountains are more than 2,000 feet above me. I am about 300 feet above the minimum altitude level of 3,700 feet and I'm quite happy with that. <coughs> I'm going to show this whole flight now and what I'm now looking for is the DME 3.5 circle which is where I'm going to make my turn. I also know that my second VOR, the OEJ, should read 14.1 as we get to that circle. That's just a bit of a, a double check that the first officer will be watching. It looks like I don't really need that DME ring because I'm certainly going to turn before that mountain which we're flying straight into ahead of us. The autopilot is still flying us so it won't let us go below 3700 feet but once I disconnect I'll have to make a sharp right turn immediately below us will be a ridge once I'm over the ridge I'll have to turn and descend and line up with the runway. I'm watching the second VOR and I know when that VOR reads 14.1 the nose of my aircraft will just touch the 3.5 DME circle and it will be time to make our descending turn. This is where the notorious thrown wind can blow you off course or 
push you down or up any second now I'm going to disconnect the autopilot and auto throttle these terrain warnings are not helpful there's a little button in front of the first officer that I would ask uh, him to switch off but I'm concentrating on this difficult turn so I'll just leave the warnings going the maps say the radius of this turn mustn't be more than 1700 meters and in this aircraft with flaps 40 that means a bank angle of about 30 degrees so now I'm looking for the runway to come into sight on the right and there it is it looks as I've made the turn a little bit too narrow it's much more difficult to line up and land in the simulator than in real life I'm told this by real Boeing pilots and I've experienced it in Cessnas I also find the throttle on my joystick not really true to life and if anybody's got any ideas please let me know in the comments so whatever this landing holds I'm just going to do it because you only get one chance in real life so I'm going to do it once <coughs> whatever happens happens the other thing is that the runway is only six and a half thousand feet so we certainly don't want to land long it certainly would be easier to land straight in from the other side and the only reason to circle is wind <clears throat> so we landed a little bit short and not on the center line but we're alive and on the ground this was an extremely challenging flight and I learned a lot from it and I hope you did too it was all there flight planning map reading advanced CDU manipulations VORs and ADFs as well as a tricky visual approach and landing we are going to taxi to the airport terminal and while the captain is taxiing the first officer will do the after landing procedures which I will take you through we will then do a quick shutdown and the passengers will disembark at least the taxi doesn't look like a challenge there's only one off ramp and we're going to park in gate B1 so while we are taxiing the first officer will make sure that the speed brakes are in the off position he will retract the flaps on the overhead panel start the APU switch the probe heat switches off turn the landing lights off and set the taxi lights as needed put the position light to steady the engine start switches go from continuous to off switch the transponder to standby as there's no ground radar at Innsbruck I'm going to fast forward the taxi procedure and then we're going to do a shutdown set the parking brake on turn both APU generator switches on and verify that the engine bus off lights are lit and the APU gen bus light is extinguished on the pedestal move both engine start levers to cut off and verify that the engine powers down now you can turn the seatbelt lights off turn the red anti-collision lights off as a signal to ground crew that they can approach the aircraft taxi lights off and all the fuel pumps off excepting the left forward which is supplying the APU 
leave the engine hydraulic pump switches on but turn off the electric demand pump switches. On the pneumatic panel, isolation valve to open, APU bleed switches on. On the EFIS, turn off terrain mode, traffic mode and both nav pointers turned off. Go to FS Actions and turn on ground connections and set the chocks and once the chocks are set switch off the parking brake. Open the forward left door and both cargo holds. Next let's extend the stairs and we can actually watch from outside as they extend down to the ground. Once the passengers are off we can turn off the APU and turn off the last fuel pump. And finally we can do the shutdown checklist. This has been part 4 of the second tutorial of the PMDG Boeing 737-800 Top of Descent, Approach, Landing and Shutdown. Goodbye and thanks for watching.